Hello everyone. Welcome back to some more art and imagination. Before I show you what I'm reading today, let's look at another word puzzle. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Can you guess this word before I put any of the letters? It's another word that has an E at the end. I wonder if the E is going to make a sound or if it's going to be a silent E. There's a V volcano. Hmm. This looks like a bat. Can you guess the word yet? I bet some of you know it now. There's an A for apple. Above. Today's word is above. Oh. Above all, I like doing art. So I'm bringing back an old favorite. Let's Make Rabbits by Leo Leone. I recently read this on a Zoom meeting. So if you've already heard me read this book, you can forward to the art part. But I wanted to share this because I'm interested in doing some collage art today. And this book has some collage art in it. You might recognize the name Leo Leone. It's the same author and artist that did Little Blue and Little Yellow that was read before. He says, this is a fable. So a fable is a story that can teach a lesson. Oops, I have my name in this book. I have my name in most of my books. Let's Make Rabbits by Leo, a fable by Leo Leone. It looks like there's lots of pieces of paper with patterns on it. Good morning, said the scissors to the pencil. What shall we do today? Let's make rabbits, said the pencil. So they went to work. The pencil drew a rabbit. And out of scraps of brightly colored paper, the scissors made one too. See how they have the different shapes? They have an ear, eye, a head, a jelly bean shaped body. Immediately, the two rabbits were the best of friends. But it wasn't long before they were hungry. After looking in vain for something to eat, they called the pencil and the scissors. We're hungry, they said. You know, when somebody says looking in vain, it means they were looking but didn't find anything. In vain means what you're doing doesn't matter. It's not having any effect. So the pencil drew a carrot and the scissors made one too. The rabbits ate the carrots with joy. And then with their tummies full, It says they went to sleep. When they woke up, they were hungry again. And again, they called the pencil and scissors. But this time, no one came. They looked all over, even outside of the page. Until suddenly they saw a big orange carrot. That carrot is real, said the scissors rabbit. How do you know? 
asked the pencil rabbit. It has a shadow, the scissors rabbit replied. You see that shadow? Do you, if you look carefully at this picture, it looks like it's a, also a picture that was drawn. To me, it looks like colored pencil. But it has a shadow. We'll eat it anyway, the hungry rabbits decided. They sank their teeth into the tasty carrot, and in no time, it had disappeared, greens and all. Look, said the pencil rabbit. Look, we have shadows too. We are real, they both exclaimed, and happily, they hopped away. The end. So they decided they were real because they made a shadow. You ever notice the shadow on the wall? Can't really see it very well. I would have to make a big light. See if I can do that. Oh, I hadn't planned this, but look. If we look at my wall, I make the light very bright and I put my hand. You see the shadow behind it? <laughs> I have my box with my collage things that I used last time. And I saved the rest of this Kleenex box that I had started to cut apart. I liked this Kleenex box because it had different patterns and different colors on different parts of the box. And I thought I could make something with that. I also found this shiny piece of wrapper and I thought that could be used to make something. I'll use this piece of cardboard for my picture. I need a pair of scissors. Got my big ones here and some glue. And I think I said this another time, but if you don't have glue, you can use a uh, little flour and water mixed together. It makes a good glue. Sometimes it takes me a moment to get that document camera started up. You ever notice that? So I'm going to make a picture on this cardboard. Go closer there. Hmm. I need to cut some shapes. Let me get a little piece of this gray. Maybe a couple pieces. And I've got this blue. And there's a whole bunch of yellow on this side of the box. Open that up. There we go. I wonder what kind of friend I can make with these colors. I noticed that. Leonione used a jelly bean shape for the body. That's kind of like an oval, like this. But on one side, it goes up and around like that. That could be a shape for something, a body for some kind of animal. Yeah, animal needs a head too. Maybe we can use some of our yellow. Let's see, the head's going to be smaller. I noticed that he didn't exactly make it round. He made it kind of kind of a, a lumpy egg shape, kind of. Hmm. I don't know. I look at that and I think that's a little small for a for a head, but maybe it could be an ear. I'll show you a trick. I want the same shape. 
I can put them together like that, cut out around it. It's a little tricky to hold. I can also draw the line and cut on the line. Have you ever done that when you're cutting something out? That makes a pair of ears. Those remind me of mouse ears. But I think I need a bigger head. Something a little more like this. Hmm. That's starting to look like something. Hmm? There. That's starting to look like an animal. I think it needs probably some legs. I noticed long sausage looking things were used last time for the front legs. Did you notice that? One of them was kind of curvy. Hmm, maybe I can make them about the same size. This one needs to be a little shorter. Hmm. And then that back leg, do you remember? It had a funny shape. Like a round piece with a stick stuck on the side of it. That's a trickier piece to make. Maybe I can use a pencil or a pen. A pencil down here. If you draw that, I'm going to draw a circle and draw a stick next to it. That would be that shape. Did you know the shapes of almost everything? Everything is basically circles and sticks. You ever notice that? This is a stick. If I do this, it's a circle. If I do this, it's kind of both, isn't it? Circle and a stick. Almost every shape out there is circles and sticks. It helps when you're doing collage and knowing that helps when you draw as well. I think I need another, well, that's a really small looking leg. Don't you think it's a little small? Hmm, its face needs to face the other way and be bigger. All right. I need some more gray. These pieces are not big enough. Sometimes when I'm doing art, I change what I am doing in the middle of it. I change my mind or I think something's not working. You know, when you do art, you have to do that a lot. Change your mind on things sometimes. I think that is going to be a better, I don't think it needs to be even bigger. I don't like even bigger. That's the nice thing about this is I can change my mind and get the shape I want before I cut it out. There you go. All right. That's starting to look like I want. If I want another one. I think I did it backwards again. <laughs> yes, I did. That's funny. I think I'm going to leave it that way. Just for fun. Sometimes when my art isn't going the way I want, sometimes I'll just let it do what it wants to do so that I can see something I wasn't expecting. All right, so that means this leg is going to go like that. This one is going to go like this. All right, there we go. I think that mouse might need a tail. How about a blue tail? A ravelly line.
Hmm. Your lines are tricky to cut. There we go. The tail kind of wants to come up off of the paper. Uh oh. And I get the pieces all together and glue them down any way I want. I'm cutting out a tiny little blue piece. I. And I think perhaps my mouse might need a nose for sniffing out cheese. I think it needs some cheese. Is your leg falling down, little mouse? <laughs> That's a big nose for a mouse. He must want a lot of cheese. I have some yellow. Perhaps I can make a piece of cheese. Did I draw cheese the other day? I must like cheese a lot. Here's a piece of cheese for the mouse to eat. <laughs> if you get permission to borrow all kinds of packaging, cereal boxes, oops, box my camera, different kinds of things, you can you can use those. To get all kinds of pictures and patterns. I realize I still haven't used that piece of wrapper, did I? Hmm. I still have to figure out something to do with that wrapper. Maybe it could be part of a bug, or maybe it could be part of a piece of jewelry. Make shiny. I'm getting everything back into my box. There we go. Save my glue so I can glue my mouse later. Maybe show it to you next time. Second book I wanted to show you is another favorite artist that likes to use collage. One we read yesterday, only this one is by Eric Carle, is A House for Hermit Crab. It's also kind of about building things. A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carle. Here's the splash page. Oh, excuse me. See how he's got that that paint? Doesn't that look like a finger painting? Do you think he took a tool or his fingers and moved them across the paint like that? He makes a lot of different papers that he cuts out and makes into these pictures. This one's also happening in the ocean, like Mr. Seahorse was. A house for hermit crabs. Oh, there is a dedication and a poem for my son, Rolf. Hermit crabs live on the ocean floor. Their skin is hard, except for the abdomen, which is soft. To protect the soft spot, the hermit crab borrows a shell and makes this his house. And then only its face, feet, and claws stick out from the shell. That way it can see, walk, and catch its food. When a hermit crab is threatened, it withdraws into its shell until the danger has passed. There's the predator. I know this is a predator because uh, it has teeth. I think it's hunting food. Oh, time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit Crab stepped out of the shell and onto the floor of the ocean. But it was frightening out in the open sea without a shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved right in, wiggling and waggling about inside it to see how it felt. It felt just right. But it looked so, well, so plain, thought Hermit Crab. In March, 
Hermit crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live in my house? It is so plain, it needs you. I'll come, whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. In April, hermit crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly along the seafloor. How handsome you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would, signaled a little sea star. Carefully, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. In May, hermit crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. How pretty you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. Gingerly, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In June, hermit crab came to a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went picking up algae and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hard working you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean my house? I would, offered one of the snails. Happily, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In July, Hermit crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and placed it near his shell. In August, Hermit crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark here, thought hermit crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like nighttime, cried the sea urchin. In September, hermit crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lanternfish, and it swam near the shell. In October, hermit crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Herdy, hermit crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. Hermit crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Oh, now my house is perfect, cheered hermit crab. But in November, hermit crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. Little by little, over the year, Hermit Crab had grown. Soon he would find another bigger home, but he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. Oh, they have been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They are like a family. How can I ever leave them? In December, a smaller hermit crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of a place for me? Uh, I have outgrown my house too, answered hermit crab. I, I must move on. You are welcome to live here, but you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. 
following January, Hermit Crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. <sighs> Couldn't stay in that little shell forever, said the Hermit Crab, and he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered, but Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon he spied the perfect house, a big empty shell. It looked, well, a little plain, but sponges, he thought, particles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. Hermit Crab had a lot of fun decorating his house. Did you notice what he decorated it with? He decorated it with friends. I hope you enjoyed our story time today. Maybe you can find something around your house to do some of your, of your own collage art with. I'm excited to see what some of you do. Maybe you can show me. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.